This episode is brought to you by Japan, because Japan seems to love its own works of anime. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 93 of Pokemon Sun and Moon just dropped, and it's something. Uh, I'm not even sure what to say, so let's just begin with the review. Our episode begins with Team Rocket advertising some donuts when all of a sudden, a gust of wind blows a theater script on Jessie's face. James calls out to her and lets her know that the donuts are done. However, when she responds, her work hat flies off, her hair is flowing in the wind, and she's turning into an actress. She gives a movie-like speech about her sweet honey donut. We come back to reality, and it was, this is just all in her head. James hands her the sweet honey donuts, but she lets him know that what she just said was a line from a play, and that they're going to close down for today because she has to participate in this play. So she starts heading towards the Pokemon school. After the intro plays, uh, we come back, and the narrator lets us know that the school is putting on some sort of play, and we go into a small building outside of the Pokemon school. Inside the theater backstage, we see our heroes preparing for the play, Kiawe is practicing his pitch, Sophocles is practicing how to say his lines, Lily is memorizing her script, Mallow is practicing with Serena, and Lana is practicing with Poplio. Ash should look around for his script. It looks like he lost his script, so this is the one that Jesse found. Luckily, Rotom has an extra script for him. Rotom lets him know that they need to be ready because everyone is coming to see their play. This includes Ash's mom and Mallow's dad. Ash and Mallow peek outside of the curtain to see that everyone they know are there for the most part. We see Ash's mom introducing herself to Lusamine, which is so strange. Principal Oak introduces the play, and it begins. Our play seems to be one where the story is from a long, long time ago. Alola had lost the power of Earth, and the hero Lilel, played by Lily, rose up. She's called by the king and queen, who's played by Sophocles and Serena, and they want her to find the legendary Pokemon and gather its power into the cane of Alola to help save it. Then, the queen hands Lilel the cane of Alola. In the next scene, we see three Tapus. Tapu Coco, played by Ash, Tapu Fini, played by Lana, and Tapu Lele, played by Mallow. Things aren't going perfectly because Lily can't say her lines because Sophocles is late changing into his Tapu Bulu costume. But things are still going well enough. He finally gets changed and gets in line with the other Tapus. Lilel then asks the Guardian Pokemon for their power. The Tapus then make Pokemon appear dressed up as themselves, which is a nice touch, and dance. We cut to another scene where the king and queen are dancing. This is followed by a scene where Lilel is going through a treacherous mountains, windy forest, and fighting monsters. She finally gets to the mountain where three old men, played again by Ash, Mallow, and Lana, hand her a bright yellow orb of some sort. Actually kind of looks like a Dragon Ball. Then, the legendary Pokemon, which is supposed to represent Solgaleo, played by Kiawe, shows up. We see Team Rocket then on a scaffold holding a rope, ready to let Jesse in, who's dressed up as Lunala. It seems like James and Meowth don't want to be there and only doing so to help Jesse. We see Jesse on top of the stage, ready to jump down. Then, as Kiawe is giving his speech, she jumps down, which confuses everyone because she isn't part of the script. She then says her own lines, which again aren't part of the script. Then Rotom thinks fast and closes the curtain for a while while claiming this is the end of the first act. Who's that Pokemon? It's Serena. With the curtains closed, they try to figure out what's going on. Jessie says that she's a world-famous actress and that she has her own script, where she scribbled out all of their lines and wrote her own. So, Rotom decides that instead of trying to fight it, he'll write the script on the fly and make it work. But to do that, they'll need some extra stage hands, which is where James and Meowth come in. By the way, while this is going on backstage, the audience has no idea what's going on. They think this is still part of the play. Also, while Jessie's giving her speech, she makes a bunch of references to other animes. There's so many references in this, so special thanks to Azure Samurott on Twitter for making this list that shows what these references are. Anyways, Act 2, there's a lot of parodies and references, so I'll try to list everything I can. I'm sure I missed a bunch, but before that, real quick, Act 2 is one where there's some sort of crime committed and our hero Lilel has to do a bunch of challenges to get power of the legendary Pokemon, alright? So, with that being the basic premise, this is what happens. It starts off with a reference to their own episode 28, where Lilel is about to play baseball. Then, this is interrupted by Officer Jenny, played by Sophocles and Lana, who claim that they're investigating a crime. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a reference to their episode 9. Then, Rotom gets in his Rotom detective wig and tries to solve the mystery, which I think is 
referencing episode 17. Then, Solgaleo and Lunala also say that they'll handle the case. Lila then says that if something isn't done, something dreadful will befall Alola. Someone needs to shine a light on Alola. Q Ash, coming in dressed as Alternate Krasma, he hits the floor before being pulled back up. He claims that he will shine a light on Alola, and how does he do that? Well, Pikachu is also in his costume, so he asked Pikachu to use Thunderbolt to make it look like he was glowing. That's pretty smart. Then we cut backstage. There is chaos, with everyone changing costume and Rotom furiously typing on the fly. There's so much happening here. Lana dressed up as Piplup, Meowth and Wobbuffet dressed up as I think a Helioptile and a Lotad, Mallow dressed up as a Chespin, Ash and Pikachu dressed up as a Buzzwole, Sophocles dressed up as a Stakataka, Kiawe dressed up as a Zerkitry. Meanwhile, the audience still doesn't suspect a single thing and they're just wondering how many acts there are in the play. We cut to Ash's Pikachu playing someone trying to deliver a message to Lilil who's being blocked by Kiawe's Turtonator. They're being voiced by Ash and Kiawe backstage. And the way Pikachu gets past this Turtonator is by becoming giant. How did he do that? He just moved closer to the light. That was pretty funny. Then there's more references to both theirs and other animes. There's a Gundam-like mech transformation which references episode 41 from their anime and the 1963 anime Tetsujin 28 Go. Lana is hitting all the pool shots in one hit which I'm sure is a reference to all these American western films that have something similar. Then the Utena reference with Mallow and Lily. Then a fake Pokemon battle between Poplio and Marowak. Finally, it's almost Jessie's turn. She doesn't want to leave until she gets all the applause, even though James and Meowth want to leave so that they don't get caught. Rotom lets her know that she's up next and we see Beware sneaking up on the stage. The hero Lila has finally passed all of her trial and now Lunala has to give her the power of the staff. And Jessie does this in the most dramatic way with rose petals flying all around her which is really just James throwing flower petals at a fan and everyone's impressed by her performance. James and Meowth are so moved that Meowth lets go of the rope that's supposed to be holding her. Luckily Beware is there to catch her. Jessie then gives her final speech before the rope is yanked ridiculously hard sending her through the ceiling by Beware. Beware then takes James and Meowth and jumps through the building himself essentially blasting off along with Jessie. With that, in the play, Alola had been saved, and that was the end of the play. It seemed like everyone in the crowd loved it, and they thanked the audience, and then that was curtains. Afterwards for this episode, there's a short film called Eevee, Where Are You Going? It's a cute little film where it's the Eevee from the intro and the poster, and it's just walking around, trying to find food. It finds the food, but turns out it's a Hound Hour's food, so it gets chased until it gets up on a boat, and it looks like it's headed to Alola. So, we'll see how this pans out. The after credit scene for this episode is one where everyone's cleaning up and Rotom isn't really doing anything. It seems that this play has fired him up and he wants to make a sci-fi epic next. And then he shows Ash a poster, which is a parody of the New Hope poster with Ash as Luke Skywalker. Ash seems ridiculously excited about this too before he's reminded by Mal of that they're supposed to be cleaning up. The next episode is a Halloween special, which also looks crazy. It has tons of ghost Pokemon and crazy things and visuals happening, so I'm excited to see that. This episode to me was a mixed bag. First half of the episode is straightforward enough with a play that's a structure and easy to follow. The second half is crazy disjointed with tons and tons of references and parodies. If you can understand a lot of these references, you might like it or you might not. It really depends. If you want to learn more about these references, by the way, I'll leave a link in the description to Entity May's video where he explained a bunch of these references. As for me, the episode was fine. Even though I didn't understand a lot of the references, I felt that I understood enough to enjoy this episode. However, when this episode gets released in America, I could see a lot of people not liking it because there's so many Japanese only things here. But again, it really depends on your preference. But that's it for this episode. Again, thanks to Audit for the reference picture. You can follow him at Azure Samurai. If you like this episode, like, share, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming. Join me for the next episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon Anime, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Ready.